What's going on, family? What's going on? It's your brother, DJ Sam Rock, and you're right here hanging out with me on the Blaze Bible Study every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here at Soul Winners with a Z.org. Also, on all the social media platforms that we're riding out on, and also on the podcast right there at Soul Winners with a Z.org. You could also call in live. The number is 484-273-2430. My name is Brother DJ Sam Rock, a.k.a. Brother Sam, and we're going to get into something Part two of what we started last week called God Fire, the fire of God in every single believer. This is part two of God Fire. So we're going to be talking about Ephesians chapter five. We're going to read the Ephesians chapter five chapter in the New Testament, how we need to be living in the light until the darkness is gone for real. Like now is our time to shine. Uh, Actually, I think we're behind the boat, behind the ball a little bit when the pandemic hit to the whole world. That was when the light of Christ and the body of Christ should have been shining brightest. Um, but let's see. Let's see if God gives us another opportunity. I, I think we missed that boat, literally. Amen. I can't speak for the whole entire body. I can't speak for the whole entire nations of people that, you know, believe in the Lord Jesus. I don't know or where the, you know, revivals were, what was going on everywhere. Uh, but I, I, at least in my area where I'm concerned about, because it's my area, um, the light should have been shining brighter than what it shined. Um, there was a lot of bickering going on. There was a lot of living in the darkness. There was a lot of hiding out. There was a lot of um, lack, which there shouldn't be the lack of, in the kingdom of God. And there was a lot of shutdowns, a lot of close downs, a lot of closures of churches and all that stuff. And I believe that that shouldn't be. It should never be like that. No matter if there's a famine in the land, pandemic, whatever the case may be, it shouldn't be that way. It just shouldn't because God speaks of us as the light of and salt of this earth. So where there's light, darkness got to go, right? And where there's salt, that means we have flavor. We have that flavor. We have more than the sauce. We have the flavor that never goes away. We have the salt of God in us, and we're on fire for that. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, any prayer requests, you know what to do. Leave them right here in the live chat if you're on the social. If you're on the podcast with me from whatever platform you're listening to the podcast from, there should be a spot, a place where you can message me, connect with me. If not, you could always email me at DJ Sam Rock at soulwinnerswithaz.org. We're going to get into this. Ephesians chapter 5. What's up, brother Zay? God bless you, my man, my bro. God bless you, man. I'm trying not to preach, but hey, if I have to preach, I'll preach. You know what I mean? I just like to chop it up about the word of God. Um, give my perspective of what God is speaking to me, and maybe you could share in on it as well. So um, I'm just going to read the word. Let the word speak for itself. Nothing fancy. I don't need to slick talk my way through the scriptures or nothing like that. Um, no need to be clever or anything like that. The word speaks for itself. The word speaks for itself. The word is alive, active, sharper than any double edged sword, and the word of God is able, able to pierce even through the bone marrow and all those. God's word is so powerful that every time you read it, the author is present with you by way of Holy Spirit. You pick up one of these Bibles, right? And every time you read the Bible from cover to cover, the author of the scriptures, which is one spirit, one God, right? One uh, spirit, one God, one faith, one hope. We trust in this God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. The God of the Christians. He's present every time you read the word. Now, of course, he assigned people to write the scriptures. He inspired men all through the times that the Bible was put together. And people are worrying about missing books. I'm not worrying about no missing books in the Bible. I'm worrying about the books that are in the scriptures that we have. We have more than enough that we need. Uh, I don't got to worry about no missing books. Oh, there's there's books missing. Yeah, there are. That's very true because in the scripture, God speaks about an Old Testament of God... um, Uh, the book of wars or something like that, book of kings, wars or something like that. And it's not in the Bible, but God mentions it. So there's books that are not in the Bible. Absolutely. But God knows that. And he gave us more than enough to live this life out in um, the way he wants us to live it in the godliest way that we can. So I'm not worried about the missing books. I'm worried about the books that we have in the scriptures. Let's start there, right? We ain't got to worry about no missing books, man. Uh, people I uh, want to get thrown off by those mi- the so-called missing books, whatever. You could go find those missing books if you want. I want to stay with what we have in the scriptures. Amen. That's more than enough for me. God bless you, Sister Joyce. God bless you. Welcome to the Blaze Bible Study. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to take a minute to pray. You know, we're going to pray first. Then we're going to take a minute to share this out with as many people as we can. Also, the phone lines are wide open. 
484-273-2430. Phone lines are wide open. I'll try my best to monitor the phone as we move forward and what we're going to do tonight. We're going to be in Ephesians chapter 5. Earlier this morning, God gave me a little piece of Ephesians chapter 5. We're going to stay in this chapter. We're going to be lights. We're going to be blazing on fire. Have the fire of God in us. This is part 2 of the God fire. Amen. And it turned into a series because when you talk about the fire of God, when you talk about Holy Spirit God, it's really an ongoing situation. You don't stop. You don't stop being on fire for God, amen, if you have Holy Spirit active in your life, active in your life. Will this spiritual war ever end? Yeah, the spiritual war will end, right, when Jesus cracks the sky at the end time, right, because there's a war going on, nobody's safe from, right? You can run, but you can't hide forever. The rappers even know that. But listen, spiritual warfare is going to go on until Jesus cracks open the sky, right, and comes back. Um, to judge angels and to judge whoever is left here on this earth. And guess what? The people of God, the children of God, we're coming back with him. Spiritual warfare. This is spiritual warfare going on right now for souls. Right this instant, right now. And not only that, there's a spiritual war going on between my flesh and the spirit. Amen? But I know for sure who wins. Because I read the scriptures. I read the end of the book. You ever read? You ever picked up a book and be like, I want to know what happens at the end. And you read the end? I've done that plenty of times, man. So if you can help me, put up some fire emojis. Put up some fire emojis on the live. Fire emojis all over. We're going to let people know that we're on fire for the Lord. Put up some fire emojis and help a brother out. We're going to be imitators of God. We're going to shine the light of Christ until darkness is gone. We're also going to live in the light until the darkness is gone. So give me those uh, fire emojis. Jason Walker, what's up, brother? God bless you. Welcome to the blaze. Amen. So listen, let's do this. Let's get together right now. Let's pray. I believe we got the greatest, most powerful prayer warriors connected right now. That's going to connect later on on the Blaze Bible Study. We've seen things happen when we prayed for people, for situations, all kind of stuff. People could testify the power of prayer. Amen. And it's not because I'm praying. It's because God hears the prayers and answers the prayers according to his will and his purpose for our lives and for the lives of those people we're praying for. So put up some fire emojis, put fuego, put fire. If you write the word fire on the social, uh, the flame will come up. I need to see those so that way we can know that and tell, let other people know that we were on fire. God fire. This is part two. So I thank you, Lord Jesus, for this opportunity. I thank you, Lord God, for the fire of God, the Holy Spirit, God, that's in within every single believer who believes and trusts and puts their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the one who bankrupt heaven, came to this earth, was crucified on the cross, died, and then three days later rose again. That very same spirit is available or in us, every single believer, every single child of God, every single son and daughter of the Lord. I thank you for that power. Thank you for your word, Lord Jesus. I thank you that we can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I thank you that we speak the name Jesus and demons have to leave. I thank you that we are the light and the salt of this earth like you declared we are. And wherever we shine our light, darkness has to go. Wherever we will put down our saltiness, we have the flavor of God and we're on fire for the Lord. So I speak a hedge of protection over every single listener, every single viewer right now in the name of Jesus. And I speak health strength and protection to every single believer around the world who's right now being persecuted for their faith, facing death, facing trial, facing all kind of turmoil and chaos. I pray, Lord God, our protection. I speak Psalm 91 over their lives and over my life right now. I speak Psalm 91 over my son as he is a firefighter in New York. I speak no harm comes against him and his family and his household that when he walks into those fires, he would come out unscathed, without a spot or blemish, without any smoke on his life, in Jesus' name. And I speak that for every single believer, every single family member, from the youngest to the oldest, in the powerful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, thank you for the fire, Jason. Thank you for the fire. So, put up those fire emojis if you can, you know, if you know how to do it. If you're on the podcast, you could just write on the comments, fuego, fire, or put up an emoji, the fire flame emoji, because we're going to be on God fire. This is part two. Ephesians chapter 5. Let's take a minute to share this out with as many people as we can possibly share in 60 seconds. Or even if you want to share during the Bible study, but I don't know how that will work because the player or whatever will you get interrupted. And also, if you want to call in with any questions, comments, concerns, prayer requests, the number is 484 273 24 
3-0. Thank you, Sister Joyce, for the fire emoji. Amen. We're going to get into this. We're going to get into this. Let's take a minute to share this out. And when we come back, we'll be in Ephesians chapter 5. I'll be reading out of the Amplified Version. Get your Bible apps ready. Get your word ready. Amen. And read it from whatever um, version you have. It could be the NLT, NIV, um, ASV. There's so many different versions of the scripture. But amen. They should kind of like connect the dots of what God is going to do tonight by the power of his spirit. Amen. So let's get this minute. I got to look for my minute. And when we come back, we'll be in Ephesians chapter five. I'll be right back. We're back. We're back. The Bible study with your brother DJ Sandrock called the Blaze Bible Studies Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays around 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. When you don't see me live, it's because I didn't have time or I didn't go live. That's all. This is a live. This is not a television show. This is not. You know. This is a live stream. Amen. And I challenge myself to do these live because listen, if you don't think that I know the scriptures, then you shouldn't be listening to me. But when I read the scriptures, Amen. Let the scriptures deal with us. Let the scriptures do what it do. But it does, right? Let it deal with us. Because we are the light and the salt of this earth. Just like the scriptures say, I'm going to say that over me and over you if you're a believer. If you're not a believer, my question to you is, what are you waiting for? What other, who other God or what other God can give you the hope, the glory, the honor? What, what other God can give you the power, amen, that he invested in us by way of his Holy Spirit? What other... Um, figure in scripture or all any kind of religious book died and rose again from the grave and is still alive and is promised to come back. What other book that you've ever read has a story of redemption since the fall of man, since we fell, and then there's a thin line, a thread, a thread of redemption all the way to the end of the scriptures. Amen. Yahweh, God of the Ab- of the family of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Christian Bible, um, the Christian God. Amen. Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, amen, he is the one. Ephesians chapter 5, therefore become imitators of God, copy him and follow his example. Listen, there's a lot of trendy videos to going around quoting that they're, that I'm God because God is in me, therefore I'm God. I am the I am. No, you're not. No, I'm not. And I know people will say, oh, the word says you are, you know, this, that, and the third. Listen, I am a man of God. I'm not the God of man. Period. Whoever's going around saying they're the God of man, they need to get their nugget checked. Therefore, become imitators of God. Copy him and follow his example. Right? I'm a wannabe. I want to be like Jesus. You got it. As well, beloved children, imitate their father. Verse 2. And walk continually in love. That is, value one another. Practice empathy and compassion unselfishly seeking the best for others. You know how people get jealous? You know why people get jealous of other people's successes? Because they're selfish. They want more. You ever been in a calamity or situation where it's chaos going on in your life? Maybe you lost a loved one and here comes this person full of whatever selfishness and they're talking about the worst thing that happened to them. So, uh, for instance, uh, when I lost one of my daughters, uh, uh, my, my, my wife miscarried. And I remember I was with a supervisor of who I was working, the company I was working for. He was born again believer, right? And when I came out of that uh, place, uh, we were on route. And my wife had called me. I got the bad news. I went up, told my wife, listen, I can't do nothing. Um, You know, I'll see you after work. And I was messed up. Came back, got into the truck. 
And he looked at me and said, what happened? I said, listen, my, my wife just miscarried. And he said, I'll just get over it. That's selfish. That's like, are you serious? And then he started talking about, you know, oh, yeah, this happened to me, this, that, and the third. You know, I'm like, listen, that's selfishness. And when people like that see you doing well and they're not doing so good, the opposite applies. They become jealous because they're not, they haven't dealt with their selfishness yet. They haven't dealt with all their um, stuff that God wants to deal with. And they're not letting the word of God confront the issue. And walk, verse number two of Ephesians chapter five, and walk continually in love that is value one another, practice empathy and compassion, unselfishly seeking the best for others. I'm not seeking the best just for me. I'm seeking the best for others. Just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us, an offering and sacrifice to God, slain for you. You see how it is? For others. So that it became a sweet fragrance. I'm trying my best to reach as many people as I can with this message of the gospel. It's not my message, so don't get mad at me. Amen. Um, People only believe in miracles when they need one. A lot of people are like that. They don't believe in God until they realize he's the only one that they have. They don't believe in miracles until they realize that they need one. Come on. Let's believe in miracles. Let's believe in God before we realize that he's the only one that could do it. And before we realize we need a miracle. Let's believe it now. Let's put our faith forward. Let's be on fire for God. Let's activate the light in us. That when our light shines, we're living in the light. And we know we're living in the light. That means darkness has to be eliminated. Darkness has to be done with. Amen. I can't walk in darkness. If I walk in darkness... Um, first of all, everybody would notice this right away, right? If I walk in darkness, I try to be fancy or slick or anything like that. It would show up right away because um, the light of Christ is blazing in me. So if I walk in any kind of darkness, it's going to show up on my forehead pretty much. Amen. That's a, a figure of speech. Um, Jason says, amen. Seek the best for others no matter what is going on with you. Yes. Listen, on my worst times when I was losing children left and right, right? And, you know, I was born again. And still losing children, miscarriages, all that. I, we would still go, me and my wife would still go and celebrate other people's um, baby showers. It was hard for her. It was hard for me. Um, you know, we would celebrate life. We're still celebrating life. And we don't, we're not envious. We were dealing with it because we were like, wow, how in the world does this person who's still smoking and drinking during the pregnancy having babies that are, you know, full-term babies that are okay? Not that we wish bad for anybody's baby, but we were just wondering. We were trying to do everything we could to protect, guard, and keep ourselves healthy. And we had the Lord and everything, and nothing was happening in our favor. Until recently, until the last six years, six years ago, one miracle came. And then nine months ago, we had another miracle um, daughter because God doubled the promise. It was like double for our trouble almost. That's a saying. It's not in the scriptures. It's just a saying that we Christians use. So um, thank you for your comment, Jason. So let's keep on moving. And this is what we did earlier, this scripture. But sexual immorality and all, all, A-L-L, moral impurity, indecent, offensive behavior. Um, They hired me to do a Sweet 16 and it's coming up. And the parents already let me know, listen, no booty shaking music. No music that's going to get people offended. Don't play none of that. Play upbeat music, yes. But play stuff that is upbeat to like really raise the mood up to make people feel good. It could be secular music, Christian music, but make sure, right, that it's upbeat. And I'm all about that. Because why would I go and play music that's going to cause people to practice sexual morality? Like move this, move that, you know, do this to this woman or whatever. And it's um, um, demeaning women and, you know, making men look... I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to play that. So we we're agreeing with all of that. So when I DJ this Sweet 16, it's going to be interesting because these are young people. Uh, Sweet 16, that means she has teenage friends. So I'm going to try my best to do um, what I can to make them feel good, make them have a good time. And I don't have to resort to um, this immorality that the world resorts to. And I can guarantee you this, that they're going to enjoy the music I'm going to play. It's going to be upbeat. It's going to be ready to dance, danceable music. You know, of course, I have to play the chop chop slide and it's keep it shuffle and all that stuff. But that's like, it's like a staple now. Without those songs, you know, nobody, sometimes nobody would dance if they don't hear those songs. But anyway, for as believers, our way of life, whether in public or in private, 
check this out, reflects reflects the validity of our faith. Come on. Like, if you say that you're a believer, listen, if you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, don't stop calling yourself a Christian. Period. Why bother? If you don't believe in Jesus, in Jesus, you don't read the word, you don't follow his commandments, you don't love God, you're just doing, you're just saying that you are to get some kind of position, I guess, or so people or back up off of you or whatever situation. Listen, if you're not following Jesus, stop saying you're a Christian. Nobody's going to get mad at you or nothing like that. I really respect people who say, listen, uh, I don't go to church. You know, I don't believe in God. So, you know, I'm out of it. I respect that more than people who say, oh, I go to church. I believe in God. And then they're acting ratchet. Their life is all crazy and they're doing everything the world does. There's no difference. For as believers, our way of life, whether in public or in private, reflects the validity of our faith. So if we're reflecting the validity of our faith, that means we're not worshiping the things of this world. We're walking in the light. We're not walking into darkness. Or we're not walking in darkness. Not into. In darkness. Period. Now, will we slip up? Of course. Like this, The world is a giant magnet. You ever, you ever realize that? How, how magnetizing the world is? Right? I never let the, this world magnetize me no more. Or what did Rakim say? I came in the door, I said it before, I never let this mic magnetize me no more. He's inviting me, inviting me, inviting me to rhyme. So it's like a magnet, he was saying. That the microphone, he became a microphone fiend. It was like a magnet to him. He needed to go back. The world is similar to that. The world is like a magnet, inviting you, inviting you, inviting you to do everything that the world is doing. And I know it's not easy all the time. Listen. When you get too hungry, too angry, too lonely, too tired, you have to halt. You have to stop and wait and reassess your surroundings, reassess the situation before you make your next move. Amen. You don't want to make a a life decision or a big move in your feelings, in your emotion when you're too hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. You don't want to do that because nine out of ten times you're going to make a decision that you're going to regret and you're not putting God in front of that decision, not even asking God about those decisions. So you're actually walking in your own selfishness. Right, You're actually walking in dark, not in the light. So we have to be careful how we walk, how we move, because people are watching, number one. And number two, God knows all things. And number three, why would you walk, say in private that you're a believer, and in public you act like you, you, you belong to the devil? Don't do that. It's not worth it. It's not cute. The world, is not. we're not going to ever fit into the world. So I, I gave that up a long time ago. Um, you won't be able to tell if I don't say anything because I'm a human being. I look like any other human being, right? So you're not going to be able to tell I'm a believer um, for the most part. People pick it up. You know, people who are into the supernatural, that they spiritual people, they sense the presence of the Lord wherever I go. But without having a conversation, they sense that. I've met people that looked at me and said, are you a Christian? And I've never spoken a word because they're, they're, they're sensitive to the spiritual things. But they're saying they're spiritual. They're not saying they're Christian and believer. They're not saying they're born again. They're just saying they're spiritual. There's a difference between being spiritual and being filled with Holy Spirit God. There's a difference between saying you're a Christian and being a Christian. There's a difference between saying you go to church, but you are the church. There's a difference between all of that. Verse 4. Let there be no filthiness and silly talk. I'm guilty of the silly talk. Filthiness, probably not, but silly talk, yeah, I'm guilty of that. So I have to work on that. You know, the coarse joking, those jokes that are, I have dry jokes. So people, my wife, she says I'm not funny, but everybody else will be laughing. Maybe they're laughing at me, not laughing with me. I don't know. But silly talk or coarse, obscene, vulgar joking. Now, I haven't said a vulgar or cursed in many years so I thank God for that by his grace, by his mercy. I'm delivered pretty much from that. Or I shouldn't say pretty much. I'm delivered from that. Uh, it doesn't. It won't even make sense if I go and, and flip some words and say some cuss words right now. It wouldn't even make sense. Um, it wouldn't fit me or anything like that. Even when I'm surrounded by people who are talk like that, it really doesn't um, bother me. It bothers me, but it doesn't influence me to speak the same way as it was before Christ changed my life. What about you? Amen. You're in this um, discussion with me. Jason says, I'm guilty of silly, dry talk all the time, right? It, it, it's it's a process, man. Because sometimes you see something, right? And you say something about something silly. You might just be joking And some people. I remember it was bad. One time me and a, a friend of mine, brother in Christ, 
uh, we had some company and a, a woman, a guy was here and she had a collar on and um, a joke was said about, is that a dog collar? It was a weird joke, but I know my brother in Christ, he didn't mean to hurt nobody, but I really hurt the sister in the Lord. And she was like, I'm offended. That hurt me. And we had to apologize because I laughed. So I was just as guilty. And he apologized and he said, no, you know, I didn't mean that. It was just a silly joke. You know, one of those things that you didn't mean to harm nobody, but other people will get harmed by it. I'm guilty of that too, Jason. So we're in the same boat. Just pray for me and I'll pray for you, man, because God will deliver us from that. Um, and although our intentions is to make people laugh or just to be silly, some people really take that to heart. And I don't want to be a person that damages other people's feeling. And I know Jason doesn't want to be that way either. But we'll work on it, man. God is with us. Amen. And he's available to help us. Silly talk or coarse joking because such things are not appropriate for believers. So there you have it. I have to deal with this word. You have to deal with this word. So God just says it. God just said it. But instead, speak of your thankfulness to God. And that's the way out. Amen. I try not. Trust me, I try hard not to complain. And when I do complain, you know, people notice. Because I try hard not to complain. Right? I don't want to complain because I've seen situations that are way worse than my situation. Let's just put it like that. You know, there's a man that travels the whole world preaching the gospel. And he has no limbs. I forget his name. Um, He has a, 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 a name that I always forget. But he has no limbs, no arms. And no legs. He has his his head and his torso like from his head to his waist type of thing. And God is using this man to travel all over the world to speak about grace, the grace of God, the power of God and all that. He's married and he has a child and his child has all his limbs. I believe he's a, a boy if I'm not mistaken. What is, I know he has a child that has all the limbs. He has a beautiful wife and all that. Listen, when I look at that, I'm like, what am I complaining about? Like, this man has no limbs, he has no arms, can't hold his baby, has no legs, can't run with his child. Amen. He hops along. They have to pick him up and put him on the platform from wherever he's speaking. But yet, he's trusting God. You know why? Because he knows the end game. Right? It's not about Thanos going like that, snap his finger, and everybody gets eliminated. It's about Jesus coming back, cracking open the sky, and giving us a new body. A body that has... All limbs, a body that's now heaven bound, like we're gonna have our we have our earth body now, but God Jesus is going to give us a heaven body, heavenly body. So I don't know what that's gonna look like. All I know is that we're gonna be like Jesus. Like Jesus' resurrected body, we're gonna have those limbs, we're gonna have that way of living. Amen. And if that don't excite you, I don't know what does. Amen. Brother Robert, God bless you. Nicholas James, all okay, Vochik. Yeah, he's an Australian American Christian evangelist, and motivational speaker, born with Tetra Amelia syndrome, a rare disorder characterized by the absence of arms and legs. Thank you, Robert. I, I always forget his name. Amen. And you can look him up. You don't believe me? This man preaches all around the world. And then he got married and has a child. I think he has one child at least. But and um he they asked him why, you know, he says, Well, when I get to my heavenly body. I'm not going to have to worry about my condition now. So he's speaking and preaching words, speaking life, because he knows he's the light of this earth, salt of the earth as well, right? And he also knows that he's living in the light and he doesn't have to live in darkness. And if anybody should be complaining, it should be him, right? So when I see his situation, his life, uh, thank you, Jason. Yeah, Nick, Vo, Vo, I can't even say his name, Vochikik, Vo, Vochikik, yeah, him. Very, very popular evangelist. Travels all around the world. It's an amazing story, man. So I try not to complain. Verse 5 of Ephesians 5. For be sure of this. Be sure. This is like guaranteed. No immoral, impure, or greedy person, for that one is in effect an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of God or the kingdom of Christ and God. For such a person places a high value on something other than God. So why would a powerful, almighty, all good God send people to hell? God's not sending people to hell. We're getting there on our own. We're rejecting the gospel. We're rejecting God. We're not doing anything the word says to do. We're doing the opposite. And we're finding ourselves, in effect, idolaters. 
Uh, we won't have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God if we're into idolatry, if we're into immorality, if we're impure, if we're greedy, because we're putting all those things in front of God. That's how we end up in hell. I'm not going to hell for nobody. I already told that to everybody I love. Um, they could, If they backslide or whatever, I'll pray. I ain't going to hell with them. I'm not going back with them to know, you know, I love all my family. I love my wife. I love my children. I ain't going to hell for nobody. That's an eternal separation from God. Who's worth that? Anybody dares to say who's worth going to hell for? Some people might be heroic and say, I'll go to hell for any, you know, you don't want to go there. There's no way out. There's no way out. There's no repentance in hell. He's dope and funny. I seen him at an uh, ATF event. Persistent and perseverance for sure. Amen. I've seen him a lot of times too. I never saw him in person, but I've seen him on YouTube, on TV, everywhere. And he has a word in his life, a word over his life. And God is using him. In his condition, God is using him. Amen. Zay Zay. Yes, love. So, verse number six. Let no one deceive you with empty arguments that encourage you to sin. You've seen, you, you've been around people. Don't, don't worry about it. God will forgive you. you I call them those, those are weekend Christian, Christians. They only go to church on Sunday. Do everything after Sunday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, they do them. Then Sunday they come to church and be like, "Oh man, God forgive me." They go to the altar, they cry. Um, my Catholic friends, they you know they they do the rosary and they think that cleans them off or whatever, and then they're back at it. It's like, which one is it? Are you gonna be with the Lord or are you gonna be with the world? You can't have both. People think you can have both. I've actually heard people with my own ears say, "Oh, you know, me and God have a certain situation, uh, a kind of agreement." I could smoke, drink, you know, cheat on my wife or whatever, cheat on my husband. I could do whatever I want. And then all I have to do is ask him for forgiveness and he'll forgive me for those things. So I'm good. Imagine living that way. And then Jesus, because he's going to come like a thief in the night. Do you know when a thief comes to your house? Or do you invite a thief to your, come to your house? Or do you, you, you say, oh, the thief, call, the thief called me up. He says it's going to be at 6 o'clock, so I'm going to be ready. For, no, he's coming like a, Jesus is coming like a thief in the night. So imagine you're in your agreement whatever agreement you think you have with the lord and you're doing your thing and it's not sunday yet and he cracks the sky open on saturday night and you're doing your thing what happens i don't know for sure what's going to happen but you think you're forgiven so you say oh, i'm going to go to heaven regardless like jesus is going to say oh don't worry about it you did everything you did during the week but it's all good you're still a christian come you know i delete all that sin just come with me I'm not sure about that. I'm not play, playing eternal Russian roulette, Russian roulette with my life. I'm not doing it. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not buying that. Sorry. If you want to live like that, you can live like that. But that means you're living in some kind of darkness. And I'm telling you, people could see your darkness. I'm telling you, people could see my darkness. If I walked in darkness, and I'm around people that are the light of this light and salt of this earth, do you think I could hide it? You think you can hide your sin from people who have the light of Christ in them? I don't think so. I just don't. I don't think that's... It won't even be fair. People hiding their stuff. It's like we can't see it. Yes, we can see it. I'm telling you. Be careful with that. I don't know who that's for. Let no one deceive you with empty arguments that encourage you to sin. For because of these things... What things? Those things that Jesus just spoke about. Or God just spoke about, or this author who was inspired by God. Either way, God's word, right? No more impure or greedy person. So if they encourage you to be sexual, um, to practice sexual morality, or to, you know, young ladies, please. This whole thing about, you know, I'm a love. Be careful who you say you love. Because um, last time I checked, unless the young man, we're talking about a normal situation, a man and a female, a male and a female, a man and a woman, boy or girl. I'm not talking about anything else but then the, uh, what God put into order. If you're thinking, young lady, that a man who is not inspired by God, not filled with God, doesn't love God, is going to respect your body, um, not use you for anything for his gain, or um, just wait because he loves you. Before you, he wants anything to do with you. 
introduce me to him, please, because that will be like one in, one in a million type of situation. And I don't think um, I've ever met an uninspired man um, that doesn't go to church, doesn't believe in Jesus, and is dating a Christian woman, young lady, that doesn't have ideas. I literally met a young man that said that he was going to take his girlfriend's Christianity from her. And from what I could see, his mission was accomplished, unfortunately. He was in church, a wolf in sheep's clothing, right? And he saw a young girl. He was young too. And she was on fire for the Lord and everything. And he made that declaration. Got her. Situation happened. Her, just pay her innocence was taken from her and now they're out there what do you do now um that's why i don't suggest you know what does darkness and light have in common um the bible speaks of you know not marrying or not connecting with an unbeliever um like for relationship so I'm just saying be careful, use caution, speak to God. I know a lot of people are lonely out there. I know that um, uh, this has been going on since I was a kid. The good girl always likes the bad guy for whatever reason. Um, maybe it's a challenge that they think they could change the guy. Um, I've never seen a story happen. I've actually saw the opposite. I knew a couple way back in the day, right, years ago, that the wife prayed for the husband. The husband got saved. She was already serving the Lord. He wasn't. He gets saved, changed, and then she doesn't like the change. She wanted literally for him to go back um, to being the same he, way he was before. And they got divorced. Thank, thank goodness, I think the brother got remarried. Well, I know the brother got remarried. I'm not sure about the sister. I think she got remarried too. But isn't that weird? Be careful what you pray for. I know I was prayed into the kingdom. Amen. Um, my wife could tell you she knew me before I got saved. She knows me now. She could tell you right away, oh, my husband ain't perfect. But he's a changed man. That's for sure. Amen. So be careful if you're thinking that, you know, if you're the Christian man, you could change the, the unchristian woman and vice versa. It's not my job. It's not your job to try to change people. Amen. Or try to save people. It's not our job. That's the job of the Holy Spirit God. He'll do the convincing and convicting. I don't know how many times I said that on the blaze and on the morning Devo, but it's so true. Live in the light so that way the darkness has to go. Living in the light until the darkness is done, right? Or the darkness is gone, I wrote. Verse number six, let no one deceive you with empty arguments that encourage you to sin. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. You don't want no smoke like that. You want to be on God fire. You want the God fire, right? You don't want the smoke, though, with God. You don't want that. I don't want that. The wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience, those who habitually sin. Notice it's not like those who sin. If it was for those, if the wrath of God was for on those who sin, because we're not sinners, Jesus, when Jesus saved me, he saved me from what? His wrath, right? So I'm no longer a sinner. I'm a saint that struggles with sin i'm born again everything in me is i'm a new creature i'm a new i'm a new creature i'm i'm a new man you're a new person if you're saved so you're no longer a sinner stop saying you're a sinner then why did jesus die for you to still stay a sinner it's like oh jesus died on the cross died rose again on the third for nothing if you're going around saying you're still a sinner you know i'm still a sinner no, you're not a sinner. If you're born again, you're born again. You're no longer a sinner. You're a saint that struggles with sin. Right? Because what sense would it make if Jesus died, saved me, like came back to life, saved me, and then I'm still a sinner? Doesn't it make a whole lot of sense? And I don't think that God is agreeing with us being, or us calling ourselves sinners after being born again. Just it just doesn't match up with what he did in my life and in your life for those who call upon his name to be saved. Verse 7, so do not participate or even associate with them. Who? The people who are trying to get you to practice sexual morality, the people who are impure, the people who are greedy, selfish, all that. 
Don't partner with them. Oh, we got to stay with... No, I'm not saying stay away from them. I have... You have family members. I have family members that don't believe in God. Let's just put it out there. I don't know any family that everybody's Christian. Now, I'm not saying there isn't families that are all Christian. I'm saying Sam Lopez does not know any family who's all Christian. They may say they are, but you could tell them by their fruit. Um, I've, I've now <clears throat> I've heard of families that supposedly everybody believes in the Lord. Meanwhile, there was sexual morality, impurity, greed, uh, all kinds of debauchery and sin, all that stuff. So, but you know, they said, "Oh, the whole family saved." Praise the Lord um, by faith, right? But we're gonna be known by our fruit. You're not gonna know me by just saying I'm a Christian. You need to. The Bible says, "Test the spirit." Right? If somebody says that Jesus is Lord, only the person who's filled with the Spirit can say that. I tested that in real time. I was kind of like tired of this person. Kept on saying, oh, I'm a believer, I'm a Christian, I'm a believer. So I walked up to this person that I knew was into all kind of sin and whatever. And I said, well, can you say Jesus is Lord? And no joke. The person was like, oh, I can say that. I said, go ahead, say it. And he would say, oh, Jesus, Jesus, he could not say it. I said, wow, that's crazy. I said, you know why you can't say it? Because only those who are filled with the Spirit of God can say Jesus is Lord. Right? I don't know whatever happened to that person. Hopefully, the person repented, turned from his wickedness, and turned to the righteousness of God. And how did I know that? Because I'm walking around with the light that's shining on everybody's darkness. That even shines in my own darkness. If I walk in darkness, it's going to be exposed. Come on, like, who are we playing with? You can fool me, I can fool you. We can't fool God. That's the thing that people forget. Or well, nobody's going to know. Somebody would go up to you and say, oh, we're going to do this tonight. Nobody's going to know. Don't worry about it. And you're a believer, guess what? You need to be worried about it because you already know that God's going to see every single thing that we do in the darkness. He's going to put it into the light. So do not participate or even associate with them in the re- in the rebelliousness of sin. Right? Rebelliousness of sin. Verse 8. For once you were darkness, we were all darkness, but now. And when God says, but now, that means something changed. He's changed something in your life. Amen. And I'm not even looking at the phone. If you want to call in, the number is 484-273-2430. I apologize. I wasn't looking at the phone. Uh, looks like no calls. But you can call in. Questions, comments, concerns, prayer requests, or anything like that. Do not be afraid to call in. Please. I'm harmless. So, for once you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Live as those who are native born to the light. John 3, 16, 17, 18, around there. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son for whosoever believes will not perish but have eternal life. And then if you read further in that same chapter, in those verses, it tells you why people don't go to Jesus, why people don't want the gospel. Because light came into this world and the world um, didn't like the light because that would expose their darkness and their deeds of evil, their sin, and they don't want to be exposed. That is the truth. That's the gospel truth. That's why many people, although they may have reason, excuses, these all these arguments, oh, there's no God. Jesus is just the son of God. He's not God. That's why I don't believe in God, whatever. They have all these reasons and excuses. The Bible says they don't come to Jesus because Jesus is the light and they don't want to be in the light because they don't want their darkness exposed. Like, come on, let's be honest, right? I didn't want my darkness exposed. I was staying away from the light of Christ before Jesus until I realized everybody knows I'm walking in the dark, so I might as well go to the one that says he's the light of the world and see if he could expose me and change me. Amen. And he did it. Thank God I came to my senses at least to that point and came to my senses and said, okay, everybody knows my dirt anyway. I can't hide it. So let's see if I could change. Let's see if God could change me. Because I tried a lot of things to change myself and didn't work. And it doesn't work. I challenge anybody who says, oh, you can stop doing whatever you're doing and just change. Then why, why don't you? I challenge you. Change yourself then. Go right ahead. And I'm not talking about self-help books. I'm not talking about all, oh, you know, just uh, practice a good morality. I'm, I'm talking about change your life. Change yourself. Go ahead. Try it. I don't think it could be done. 
Actually, I know it can't be done. Other than that, Holy Spirit, God changing a life, there's not going to be any change. Religious people, religion could change some behaviors, but that's behavior modification. A religion would tell you, oh, you can't drink, you can't smoke, you can't watch this movie, you can't watch that mo- movie, you can't dress this way, you can't do that. You know, it has a whole bunch of rules and regulations. And the more rules and reg- regulations that you follow, I guess your your patterns of behavior would change. But it does, there's no love there, right? There's no satisfaction there. Um, there's actually more burden placed on you when you're trying to follow all the rules and regulations. And then imagine you break one of the rules and regulations, then shame and guilt come into the story. Which is not from God. So you know what I mean? Like religion doesn't cut it. Religion um, seems popular because maybe you're in a religion that's big religion. And that many people are you know, saying that this religion changed their lives. We're saying as Christians that the Lord Jesus is the one who changed our lives. And now we have Holy Spirit God. Which is Jesus in the third person. Right? Living in us. And guiding us into all chains. Into all truth. Into all righteousness. And, and in all love and in all truth. So it's a difference, man, between religion and the gospel. For once you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Live as those who are native born or are native born to the light. Verse 9. For the fruit, the effect, the result of the light consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Goodness, righteousness, truth. Verse 10, trying to learn by experience what is pleasing to the Lord and letting your lifestyles be examples of what is most acceptable to him. Your behavior expressing gratitude to God for your salvation. Amen. You could always couple this verse with Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. We're being transformed. We are the living sacrifice that God wants us to be living sacrifices, not dead sacrifices, not dead corpse, living people, living, breathing, uh, alive in him. Because if you're not alive in God, if you don't have the light of Christ, you don't have that God fire in you, you're just existing. You're just a number on this planet, a, a person with a social security number that's paying taxes and existing. You're not alive. You're not living yet until you have the one who gave you life living inside of you, working his life through you. And I can't be a Christian. Without Christ in me living it through me. I can't do it. This is not something that I made up. Nothing that's something that you made up. This is a lifestyle that can only be achieved. Or only can be realized by God living it through us. Amen. The power of God is his power. It's not our power. Amen. I thank God for loving us. I want to continue to show light in my life. I want to change to be more acceptable to him. Amen. And how do you do that, Jason? You just become everything that God created you to be. You just follow his lead. Amen. Wherever you see darkness in your life, because I do this all the time. If I see darkness in my life, I kind of confront myself with the word of God. To so confront myself with the word of God, confront myself with the light to expose that darkness. Because a little, a little bit of darkness could go a long way in my life if I allow that. If I entertain thoughts that are sinful and all that stuff, those things could take me off course. You ever been on a plane? That imagine the plane is set to go from, let's say, Philadelphia to California. And they have it all mapped out. And you don't realize because you're in the air. But if that plane is off course by one mile, one half a mile, or meters, or however they calculate the mile, you could actually go in the wrong direction. And instead of in California, you might end up in another, another state. And then you could be like, what happened? Well, they went off course. Probably didn't realize they were going off course, and it wasn't too much off course. So, people think that if you're not if you're not too if you're not sinning too much, that you're still on track to be heaven bound. But that's a lie, because a little bit of sin is a little bit of death. I'm not going to flirt with death. What about you? A little bit of sin is a little bit of death. Or I'll, I'll just cheat a little bit on my wife. Or I'll just um, you know. A little bit of sexual morality, a little bit of porn, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And that little bit will become a lot of it. So don't entertain those things, um, Jason. And everybody's listening and watching. You know where your things are, where to situate. Let the Lord confront you by his word, with his word. Amen. Thank you for your honesty. Amen. Thank you for your honesty. A lot of people won't admit any shortcomings um, or won't even say that they want to be more acceptable to the Lord. People won't say that. Um, so you, 
God will work in that honesty. Trust me and believe it. Let's keep on going. Trying to learn by experience what is pleasing to the Lord and letting your lifestyles be examples of what is most acceptable to Him. Your behavior expressing gratitude to God for your salvation. Verse 11. Do not participate in the worthless and unproductive deeds of darkness. Yeah, they're worthless. They're unproductive. Don't believe the hype of all these movie stars, rappers, all these celebrities, all these superstar athletes, all the people who have all this money and it seems like their lives are just fantastic or whatever, whatever. It's not true. That's only a facade. That's only what the money is showing you. They're not showing you their true lives, their true situations. Yeah, maybe some of millionaires that are athletes or whatever could be happy. But I know for sure that the ones who believe in Christ, they're the happiest. They're the ones who have joy, peace. Um, they have financial breakthrough, but they're also helping others. They're the ones that are really on fire for God. They, th- those are the ones who have the God fire. Athletes, movie stars, superstars, um, people of influence, people who are millionaires and all that stuff that are filled with Holy Spirit God. You see a difference between how they roll, how they act, how they behave with all their you know, accolades and everything. You see the difference between a believer in the Lord that is blessed and somebody who is blessed by um, their talents and their gift that gave them all this money and all that stuff. You can see a difference. You can see a big difference in the two. A little bit of leaven spoils the whole lump. Absolutely. Right? Or how about this? Oh, I'll just put a little bit of poison in my food. That, that would just make my stomach sick. How much is a little bit of poison? It's like, how much is a little bit of sin, right? Same thing. Thank you, Robert. Uh, <clears throat> Worthless and unproductive deeds of darkness, but instead expose them by exemplifying personal integrity, moral courage, and godly character. I like that moral courage. To go opposite of what's happening in society, um, you're going to be called a hater. I'm going to be called a hater. That's wrong. Who says? God says. Oh, that's only wrong for you. It's not wrong for me. That's only right for you. It's not right for me. That's what we call relativism. That doesn't fly. It doesn't work. It defeats itself. I'm not going to go down that road because I'm running out of time. But don't believe that. Oh, that's only true for you. That's not true for me. Listen, how many truths are there? 10, 15 truths? Oh, that's true. Oh, yeah, that's true too. Oh, that's true too. 1 plus 1 is 2. That's true. 1 plus 1 is 3. That's true. 1 plus 1 is 16. That's true. Come on, man. There has to be something that's true and there has to be something that's alive. Let's face it. Right? You ever went in front of a judge? I have went in front of a judge. And they, they make you swear on the Bible. Um, they'll probably try to change that. Why would they make you swear on the Bible? Well, maybe the Bible has authority, right? Um, it's like truth serum. Nah, it doesn't have no truth serum on the book. The truth is inside of us if you believe in Jesus. So, they're going to say, okay, um, let's hear your testimony or testify whatever is going on in the situation in court. They catch you in a lie. You're going to get um, penalized for catching you in a lie. How would they know something is a liar? How would they know something is true? By the evidence. They're going to go through the evidence and they're going to come to uh, a decision. Whether you're telling the truth or you're lying based on what? Based on the evidence. Why couldn't we approach the scriptures like that? Why don't we approach Jesus like that? Why don't we approach God like that? It's okay. He left enough evidence to make us see that what he's saying is true. Don't worry about it. You know what I mean? Don't believe what other people are saying. One truth. One God, God's truth. Amen. People don't like that, Jason. You Christians always say that you have the only way, the only truth. They're just quoting Jesus. Jesus said, he's the way, there's no other way. The truth, there's no other truth. And the life, there's no other life. He says, no man comes to the Father except by me. Right? John 14, I think, around there. 14, 6, I think it is. Let's keep on going. For it is great, disgraceful. It is disgraceful even to mention the things that such people practice in secret. What else do I have to say about that? People have all these secrets, right? I have news for you. There's no secret. There's no secret that God doesn't know. It sounds dumb, but when I was, um, I had a sexual addiction and I used to cover myself with my covers to practice the sexual addiction or whatever. And because I covered myself, I used to try to convince myself that God doesn't see it because I'm under the cover. Till I read a scripture that God, I'm paraphrasing, and I don't even know what the scripture is. I just know I read it one day. It says, God sees all things. Paraphrasing. 
And when I realized that God sees all things, I got disgusted with my sexual addiction and God delivered me from it. Isn't that crazy? I wasn't looking to get delivered because I had dopamine deposited into my brain. It was the feel good um, stuff that goes into your brain and you want you start chasing that feeling again. That's why it's called an addiction. It could be a sexual addiction, drug addiction, eating addiction. It could be that because whatever it brings pleasure, those dopamines to your brain, right? Um, you want it over and over and over again. That's why it's called an addiction. You want more of the same old, same old. Amen? Repeat what, please. One truth, one God, one one truth. Um, I don't know what you want me to repeat, what part, Zay. Amen? Hopefully it's what um, Brother Jason said. For it is disgraceful even to mention the things that such people practice in secret. But all things become visible. This is not me, this is scripture. But all things become visible when they are exposed by the light of God's precepts. For it is light that makes everything visible. For this reason, he says, awake sleeper, you know, the woke people of the United States, the woke people of this world. Awake sleeper and arise from the dead. Ooh, so that means if you're in a darkness... If you're not shining the light, you're actually dead people walking, like kind of like zombies. And arise from the dead, and Christ will shine as dawn upon you and give you light. Come up out of the darkness. Basically, that's what the word is saying. In the darkness, if I turn off all the lights in my studio, and it gets dark in the studio without no lights, right? It's nighttime right now from where I'm broadcasting, and I turn off all the lights. The table uh, that you can't see is black. So if I try to get up and run across this studio in the dark, I'm going to hit something. I'm going to get hurt. The life is in life is the same way. Walk in darkness too much. You're going to run out there in the street. Might even get hit by a truck. Something's going to happen. You're going to get hurt because you're walking in darkness. You can't see anything in front of you. Um, you getting chased from behind. You're running in the dark. You're going to hit something. You're going to hurt yourself. God says, come out of that darkness. His plan for us is not to hurt us, harm us. His plan is to give us a future and a hope, right? That Jeremiah um, prayer. That Jeremiah promise. Amen. Although that was specifically for those people, but I'm going to grab onto the principles of that promise and keep it for myself. Amen. I'm not polishing off anything that was promised in the Old Testament and trying to bring it into my situation. I'm not doing that. I'm not... Um, messing around with scriptures and making it fit my life. No, I'm being confronted by the scriptures. Amen? Grace. Grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. That's the grace of God. Awake sleeper and arise from the dead and Christ will shine as dawn upon you and give you light. Verse 15. Therefore, see that you walk carefully living life with honor. Write it down. With honor, purpose, and courage, shunning those who tolerate and enable evil. Don't 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 hook up with evil people. We're in the what they call the hookup culture. The colleges all over the nation have this thing called the hookup culture. I've heard it. I've heard it. I'm not gonna get myself in trouble, but I've heard it before. College students, right? Just say they're hooking up. Oh, who did you hook up with tonight? I'm talking about. Prestigious college campuses. Kids that are supposed to be real smart, but they're doing what the flesh wants them to do so that they think they're free. Parents got money. They got the credit card. You know, they can do pretty much whatever they want to do. They have this so-called freedom, not realizing they're in bondage to this so-called hookup culture that's taking them out of here. Sexually transmitted diseases. I literally picked up a young lady she was tripping on something, shaking. And um, she said, can you help me to the car? Like She was in panic mode. She was tripping on something. I think she was on acid or something. So, you know, a brother like me, I'm like, this is crazy. And I think it was raining that night. So I, I, I helped her into the car. And I just said, you okay? She was like, um, you know, I took something. I think they slipped her what we call a Mickey. I'm old school. And inside the drink or whatever... And she was tripping. And she doesn't know what happened to her. She doesn't even know how she ended up where she was. 
And she explained that she um, she thinks she got raped. It's crazy. That's what the hookup culture is. And you want to be a part of that? It's only cool when you're with your friends. And I could see. I literally could see when I was doing these night shifts around these college campuses. I could literally see who was the leader of the pack and who was the person that knows that they, they shouldn't even be around these people. But because of peer pressure, you think people don't go through peer pressure, right? You think adults don't go through peer pressure? You think that's only for teenagers and young people? No, it's for college students, everybody that is surrounding themselves with people that are influencing them to do opposite of what they know what's right and when they know what's wrong. They're being influenced at any age, um, wherever age you are. So be careful, man. It just that gets me a little upset because I'm like hookup culture. It sounds cool, right? Oh, we just hook up, whatever. That's that that's so old school. And during these times, wow, don't you think, you know, with everything, the pandemic and everything going on, you would want to be away from that kind of culture, but people are all in it because they they're in bondage to that type of sin. God's telling them to come out. Telling us to come out living life with honor, purpose, and courage, shunning those who tolerate tolerance. Oh, if I have to tolerate you, that means I don't love you. That just means that I have to tolerate you. And uh, I don't have to tolerate anybody's behavior that I love. Amen. Because I love you doesn't mean I have to um, approve of your sin. Because I love you, I'm going to tell you that I love you, and I don't want to be a part of your sin. Right? I have enough to deal with my on my own self, right? Tolerate shunning those who tolerate and enable evil, not as the unwise, but as wise, sensible, intelligent, discerning people. You got the goods, I got the goods, we have Christ, we move forward. Verse 16, making the very most of your time on earth, recognizing and taking advantage of each opportunity and using it with wisdom and diligence, because the days are filled with evil. Verse 17, therefore do not be foolish. And thoughtless. Um, Eastern religion. Calmer. And what is that other stuff? Um, yoga. They say empty out your mind. If I empty out my mind. What's going to be in it? I saw a Star Trek. Old school Star Trek episode. From like the 70s. 60s, 70s. Right? And Dr. Spock was um, the first officer. Like Captain Kirk's right hand man. And they went to this planet. And this lady that was from another planet took his conscience out, took his mind out, emptied his mind and now he was robot. He was like a robot being controlled by something else. We're not to empty out our minds, ladies and gentlemen. We're supposed to stay refilled, fill ourselves up with the Spirit of God continuously. Anything that's opposed to filling ourselves up with the Spirit of God and anything that's telling you to empty yourself out is demonic. Okay. I'm going to get an email for that. But understand and firmly grasp what the will of the Lord is. Verse 18. Do not get drunk with wine. People get all crazy when you read these type of scriptures. Oh, see, it says wine. It didn't say beer, alcohol. Don't get drunk with wine. I'm not drinking wine. I'm drinking, you know, Hennessy. Come on. Let's not play games. Do not be drunk. How about if I stop there? Do not get drunk. I'm not going to stop there because the word doesn't stop there. It says do not get drunk with wine for that is wickedness, corruption, stupidity. But be filled with Holy Spirit and constantly guided by Him. You can get a supernatural high. I get it all the time. Supernatural high. You see people drinking, smoking. I don't got to drink no more. I don't got to smoke no more. I'm on a supernatural high. Holiness high. Speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, offering praise by singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord. Verse 20. Always giving thanks. That's the secret sauce right there. Always giving thanks to God, the Father, for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we pray in the name of the Lord, because we're giving thanks to him for all things. Amen. And the Bible says, if you ask anything in his name, it will be granted unto us if it's the will of God over our lives. Verse 21, being subject to one another out of reverence for Christ. I'm going to stop there. But then it's going into marriage like Christ in the church. I'm going to just stop here, right? Uh, for the sake of time. But read the whole chapter of Ephesians chapter 5. There's some good stuff there man. It will make you think. It will make you get out of your darkness. And out of my darkness. If I'm in darkness. Whatever. Um, we'll get out of it. Because we know that we are light. We are salt. And we're to live in the light. So that way dark is has to go. Living in the light until the darkness is gone. This is Godfire part 2. Amen. 
I hope you got something out of this, man. I tried my best. The word of God is so much there. I could go on and on and on and on. And I'm not worried about attention spans or nothing like that. I really don't believe in that whole thing about 20 minutes. And people will pay attention. And I pay attention for hours and hours on the things I want to pay attention to. It's not about attention spans. It's about are you willing to pay attention to what really matters or are you willing to not pay attention to what really matters? It could I could have went on for three hours and people will pay attention if they want to pay attention. It's a choice. Amen. But I know psychology and all this stuff, the stuff these studies show, oh, you know, people only, um, you know, 20 minutes, whatever. I don't know where all this stuff comes from. How would they know? Does anybody know my attention span? Go ahead. Try it. I pay attention to what I'm, I, I want to pay attention to. I could watch a three-hour movie if it's good. I'll pay attention to everything. Amen? Unless I fall asleep. So I'm not really concerned with the studies and all that stuff. I'm really concerned with your soul. And I'm going to speak the word over your soul. Right? So that way you can get into a relationship with the one who can save your soul, transform you, and put the light and the God fire in you. His name is Jesus the Christ. Get to know him. So God bless you. God keep you. And remember always, 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 always. That God is good. I'm looking for my banner. I'm like, I don't see it. Hopefully this is it. Peace.